We're going to learn mainly title here. Uh, we're going to touch on leasing a little bit, but only as much as you need to know as it affects title. Uh, as far as leasing goes, if you can talk to people, it's pretty easy. Uh, most people that are leasing, they're getting something for free. They already own the minerals. They can't really do anything with them. They can't pull them out of the ground buckets. Can't sell it themselves. So they're going to get free money to develop the, the minerals that are under their, their land or under their, uh, their control. Uh, imaging, you know how to point a camera and push a button. We're not going to focus on that at all. Uh, what you need to know about this course is it's going to give you a basic overview on title. <coughs> it's not going to get you a job. Having a certificate will not get you a job. Some people get lucky. Some people know somebody. What's going to get you a job is perseverance. Emailing everybody that you can. Follow it up with a phone call the next day. If that doesn't work, show up. Put your hand out there. The harder you work at getting a job, the more likely you are to get one. Just having a certificate will not guarantee you anything. Like I said, some people get lucky. Don't count on it. Any questions about that? Everybody's going to work hard, right? I get calls all the time. People, you know, I've tried everything. I can't get a job. Well, you haven't tried everything. Sebastian, you guys all just met Sebastian. He got a job with us back in 2007 by showing up and saying, hey, can I have an interview? I said, well, you got 20 minutes before we go to lunch. And I was impressed. So I hired him. That was six years ago. <clears throat> Perseverance. All right. <coughs> Oklahoma is separated Leslie. This is our initial point. It's our jump off. We split it up into quadrants, not very even quadrants as you can see, based off of the survey system that was established uh, in the 1800s, uh, 1870-ish. It's a system that was thought of by Thomas Jefferson, of all people. And everything east of the Mississippi back then was done in meets and bounds, which is a system of go 25 feet, turn left, go 10 feet, turn right. They just drew it on property lines. What do they own? Or on the, the topography of the land and follow the river around to the pond, to the lake, to the stream. What he decided was he was going to break everything up into pretty uniform squares called sections. And for Oklahoma, they picked an initial point, which is about six miles west of Davis in Murray County. And from that, they drew a line north and south and east and west. And anything south and west is south and west. Anything north and east is north and east. The line running horizontal is called the baseline meridian. North and south line is called the Indian meridian. This line is called the Cimarron Meridian. There is no east of the Cimarron Meridian. Anything east of the Cimarron Meridian is west of the Indian Meridian. Open your books. They're not already open. Some legal descriptions. And that first map you see, the top right, Gives you an example of your Indian meridian, your baseline meridian. Most states that are west of the Mississippi utilize this system. Not all of them. Some states like Texas use two or three different systems, depending on how they felt at the time they were doing it. Mainly because they were owned by you know a couple of different people here and there throughout history.
One mile by one mile is what a section is. Inside of a, of a section, there's 30, I'm sorry, inside of a, a township, there's 36 sections. Sections one mile by one mile, township's going to be six miles by six miles. The reason they break these meridians up is to give us a geographical location of where our townships are. First township in the northeast is going to be one north, one east. What do you think this is? <coughs> one north, two east. That's just our township identifiers. We need to know where our townships are that we're working. We're heading south. Six. Sorry? One south, three east. One south, three east. Easiest way for identify where we're working. Our townships are going to be divided up based off of geographical location, almost like GPS coordinates. Follow? Make sense? Blank looks yet. Wait till after lunch. <laughs> Most of the work we're going to do for Oklahoma, over the last few years at least, is going to be north and west. This stuff may be going as far as 10 miles to the east. Hardly, hardly anything anymore in Oklahoma is going to be very far east. And in the in the years that I've been doing it, I've only seen. I only worked for one company that did anything south of Oklahoma City. I don't know if, uh, if they made anything off of it, but they were the only company that was out there where we were going. So there's not a whole lot of work going on out there. All right. Your typical township is going to be divided up. To 36 sections numbered starting with one in the very northeast corner and going from right to left and then dropping down and going from left to right and so on all the way to 36. Each one of those sections is going to be approximately 640 acres. Most of them will be 640 acres. But there's going to be a few that are going to be different. <coughs> For example, this is along Oklahoma's southern border. Well, section 36 is going to be cut <coughs> off by the border with Texas. So it's not going to be 640 acres. It's going to be whatever the government surveyed at the time usually around 1870, says it is. How many acres in a section? How many acres in a township? Don't know, really. Approximately 640 times 36. But each section is not going to be exactly 640 acres. Most of them will, but not all of them. If I'm going to work Section 10 for Township 14 North, uh, we'll say Range 13 East. You know if you can't see that. I correct you out of the way. North-South identifier is always going to be labeled as a township. It gets a little confusing because your 36 section area, your 36 sections that make up a township, is a township. But your North-South identifier is also considered a township. So your directional identifier is a township for North and South and range for East and West. 
So on the map that we saw, if I say I wanted township 14 north, 13 east, from that initial point, you're going to go 14 times 6 miles north from the initial point near Davis, Oklahoma. And then 13 times 6 miles east to get to that particular township. And inside that township, we'll be working on section 10. Section 10 is 640 acres. So, section 10. Typical section is one mile by one mile. How many feet in a mile? 5,280. It's important. <coughs> Very important because when you're turning in work for a client, nobody wants it divided up into quarter mile or kilometers or any other unit of measure that you might be used to. They want feet. <coughs> Always. <coughs> so half a mile is. <coughs> Half of that, half of that, so on and so forth. All the way down into three, four feet. Tiny. One mile by one mile is one section. How many acres? Way we're gonna, by the way, these drawings are perfect. I don't want to hear any, any complaining about my, <laughs> my perfect squares that I got going on here. We're going to divide our sections out initially into quarter sections. So if this is section 10, and this is the northeast quarter, northwest quarter. Each one of those quarter sections is going to be about how many acres? 160. 640 divided by 4. You're going to see these written many different ways. Sometimes you'll see it as the northeast quarter. Sometimes you'll see it as the northeast quarter without the slash. Sometimes you'll just see it as the northeast. It has two directional modifiers in it, north and east, or south and west, or south and east. Then it is always going to be quarter section, even if it doesn't specify, as in northeast. It means it's a quarter section. If there's not two directional modifiers, it can be a half. You're never going to see a northeast half, or if you do, there's something wrong. I've seen the east half of the north half, which is what? Northeast quarter. You'll see it occasionally. It's just confusing, and it's it's people didn't exactly know what they were doing a lot of the time. Still don't. There's just a simple single directional modifier, and it's going to be a half. You'll occasionally see them in thirds, but typically it's going to be halves and quarters. I don't want to see this. Please, I don't want to see two directional modifiers followed by a two. I don't know where that is. How many acres in a quarter section? <coughs> right. I keep 
saying typically, because we saw an example already of when a section might not be 640 workers. They were on a county line or a state line, something where it's chopped off. But we also have correction sections. What correction sections do, flip the page, page 10, is they account for the curvature of the earth. As we know, the world isn't flat. So you can't have perfect squares everywhere covering the whole surface. Because as you get closer to the poles, things tend to narrow in. So to account for this, <coughs> we came up with correction sections. <coughs> Those are there's sections that have six hundred forty acres more or less to adjust for the curve to the earth. I get that right. These particular sections aren't going to be 640 acres, typically. Sometimes they will be. I've run across correction sections that they were exactly 640 acres, even though they've been adjusted for the curvature. The northernmost sections of each township and the westernmost sections of each township are going to be considered correction sections. Anytime you hit these, you're going to need to look at the survey maps, sometimes in the courthouse, sometimes online. They're always going to be in the courthouse. And typically, they're always going to be on, uh, online. If you go to the uh, Bureau of Land Management, check out the government surveys. It'll tell you what the original survey was from 1870, 1875. Inside these sections, depending on which side of the township it's on, they're going to look different. They're going to be adjusted either on the northern side for these sections that are on the north half or on the western side for those on the northern side. So let's say section three, the township 14 north, range 13 east. Is it a correction section? It's along the northern border of township 14 north, 13 east. So yes, it will be corrected. Once in the north, are going to be corrected the north half of the north half. What would typically be the northeast northeast is no longer the northeast northeast. Now it's lot one. Lot one is going to be around 40 acres, plus or minus. We don't know. We have no idea how big lot one is until we look it up. We don't ever guess. We can't just assume that it's close to 40 acres and then turn in our report. This is probably going to be wrong, and you're probably going to get fired. <laughs> Once again, we're numbering, starting in the northeast, going from right to left. Get used to it. Kind of go back and forth in this business on, on which way you're reading and writing stuff. Uh, why they start in the northeast, I don't know. I have no idea. It'll be something I can look up over the week. One, two, three, and four. Everything else is going to be the same. South half is still going to be just the southeast border, southwest border. These The lower half of the northeast quarter, southern half, can be written however many ways they want to do it. You can say south half of the northeast. You can divide it up and say southwest of the northwest, southeast of the northwest. These are lots. 
Lots one, two, three, and four. This is for the northern sections of each township. The northern correction sections are going to be corrected along the north half of the north half. You'll also see them occasionally described as, also described as northeast of the northeast. But it's not 40 acres. So to say it's the northeast of the northeast is incomplete. You also need to, to label it as lot one. If you look at a map of the city, um, would you see a pattern of where the correctional No, I understand that. Anything? And if you turn back to page nine, that map on the bottom right, see those the, all the numbers on the outside of that map, that outside border, those are other sections bordering, which is giving you an example of what's next to each. Mm -hmm. So this is one section inside. And here is one section. Are you saying that every section is corrected for um, the curvature? The north and no. the west half? Every section along the <clears> north <throat> half, I'm sorry, along the northern border and along the western border. Right, I got that. Inside each township. Every township is going to have correction sections. Yeah. Okay. Does every section have four lots in the north half? Does every section? Or only correction. Depending on what it is, you also have correction sections that will, that will kind of uh, be handled for things when you have, say, borders along Texas or Oklahoma border with anywhere else. You have um, like government borders. They'll have correction sections in there as well. And anytime you run across a correction section, any portion that's been corrected is going to be identified as a lot. You might have some sections that have 30 lots in them, all different acreages. But they'll have government surveys to tell you exactly how big each lot is. But is a lot always on the northern boundary of the section? No. Lots can be anywhere. But in typical correction sections, the only places you're going to find them are on the northern edges for the sections that are along the northern border of each township. Or West half of the west half for those that are along the western border of each township. Same rule applies. The difference is where it's at. Page 10, bottom right. The shaded portions are your correction sections. Sorry. It is, okay. I'm sure I wasn't looking at the wrong map. Each one of those sections is going to be a correction section, which is correcting for the curvature of the earth. The only one that is different than your typical four lots for your western border, or your four lots along the northern half of the north half for your northern border, is section six. And section six is a double correction section because it is on both the west and the north. And it looks a little different. How many lots do you think it has? It's the worst square I've ever seen. Anyone? Without looking at your book? <laughs> That's not much better. It has seven. Yes. Still starting number. Northeast of the northeast. <clears throat> it's corrected on both the west half and the west half and the north half and the north half. You need to be able to identify which sections are correction sections, always. Because it's very, very unlikely that section six is going to equal 640 acres probably going to equal something a little bit more or a little bit less than 640 meters. How many
many acres is lot six? Any idea? Yeah, it's a guess, but we don't guess. We don't know. We have no idea until we look it up. It's going to be around 40 <coughs> plus or minus, but we don't write around 40 plus or minus. We look it up and we find out exactly what the government survey says. Board correction section is four. They count for the curvature of the earth. That's all they're there for. Which sections are they? All the sections along the northern border of each township and all the sections along the western border of each township. One through six, 18, 19, 30, and 31. Oh, seven. One through seven. 18, 19, 30, <coughs> Anytime you are assigned a section, one of those, you're always going to need to verify the acres. It's always a good idea to look at your flat map or <coughs> in your survey for any section you're ever on because you don't know if it's going to be along the border. They don't typically just give you a map and say, here, this is where it is. They're just going to give you a, an assignment. Section 4, Township 6 North, 13 West. I'm going to say here. And you got to look it up. What if it's right on the border? Say with Texas or Colorado. You're going to need to look it up to make sure it's not any different than your standard 640. If it is, you need to keep track of it. Okay. You'll see other reasons for lots. For instance, Canadian rivers run through the section that you're working on. Well, it's perfect. You can't exactly say, we'll say this is section 10, which is not a correction section. You can't really call this the northeast of the northeast anymore. Because it isn't exactly 40 acres. So now it's going to be lot one as well. And this, we'll say this is lot two. So they still like to start in the northeast and work counterclockwise. Lot three. It's going to be based on government surveys. The fun thing about government surveys is they might have 30 of them. And your first instinct is to say, well, whichever one is the most recent is probably the most official government survey, therefore it's going to be the one that's used. Usually, but not, not guaranteed. Uh, at least the state of Oklahoma will allow the government to use any survey that they have on file as their official survey. So if they have 10 and they're all different, they can pick one if they want. Use it. Typically, they'll use the one that is the most current, but not always. Most of the time, their surveys are just still going to be from 1870, no matter how much the rivers moved and changed. We'll get into accretion and riparian rights a little later. Let's get into some legal descriptions. Section 15 of 10 South, 4 West, which I don't even know if there is a 10 South in Oklahoma, probably close to the border already. Cool. Just for fun, we'll say there is. Is Section 15 a correction section? Okay. We'll say it's not on the border. Not a correction section. So how many acres is it? 640 acres. Northeast? How many acres? 160. Okay. Now, if I want to start dividing things up into smaller <clears throat> and smaller quadrants, how am I going to write that? 
This is the northwest border, but if I just want the north half of the northwest, how many acres is that going to be? 80. South half? 80. Same thing. What about the northeast and the southwest? What about the northwest of the southwest and the southeast? Just down. Anyway. You're always going to need to be able to know exactly how many acres it is for each individual track that you're looking at. Because if you want to lease somebody or develop their minerals, and they have this, well, you definitely don't want to pay them for 20 acres or 40 acres. When they only own 10, you don't want to overpay them. You don't want to underpay them either, but you're going to get in a lot less, lot less trouble with your client if you underpay them than if you overpay them. And you'll see them get broken down into the tiniest imaginable little piece in the world. Not only that, but that tiny little 2.5 acre tract might be owned by 30 people, but all have a different fractional interest in it. And we need to know exactly what each person owns. The state of Oklahoma wants us to pay out to the sixth decimal place, meaning Somebody owns 0 0.000002 acres of the south half of the southwest. We need to know it. Because we have to pay them. What is that? Just tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Millions. Did I skip any? So to the millionth place, we need to know who owns what. Because even if it's 10 cents, we got to pay. If they're an owner, that's what they own. we got to pay. If we're going to lease them, we got to pay. Who here likes fractions? <laughs> These guys, you know why they like fractions? Because they've been in the business for six, seven years. I hate fractions. I used to. I used to hate them. Love them. I love them now. I had to reteach myself fractions. I hadn't used them since high school. I mean, a little bit in college, but I avoided it at, at all costs. I hated fractions. I would learn fractions just long enough to take a test, and then I'd move on. Dump them. Because they suck. But they're a godsend in this business. You need to know fractions. You got to go online and teach yourself fractions or call a buddy or take a class, whatever you got to do. Learn fractions. Dave, you like fractions? I like them now. <laughs> How long have you liked them, Dave? Five or six years. He's lying. <laughs> Hate fractions. Uh, I know guys who have been in the business for six, seven years who still like to break things down in decimal format. Decimal format is going to be good 99.9999% of the time. No problem. It's always it's going to work out almost all the time. But there are going to be the rare occasions when decimals don't work. They come out to a different number, mineral acreage-wise, than fractions. And that's not good because we don't ever guess. We don't like to be wrong. We like to be right all the time. So if you're right 99.9999% of the time, that means you're still wrong some of the time. And that's dangerous. If you guess in this game, you might probably will lose your job. And if it's a 
big enough, yes. <clears throat> costly enough, yes. You might not just lose your job. You might lose everybody around your job. If the client is unhappy with your company's work because of mistakes that are being made, they're just going to say, well, we don't want any of you as a company to do any more work for us. So you just lost your job as well as everybody that worked with you. That's why we don't guess, ever. We've seen it. We've seen $400,000 mistakes. Half a million dollar mistakes, more. Because people are guessing. You gotta care about your work. It's nice to have ego. Ego in this game is very, very nice to have, as long as you are willing to sacrifice being right. You cannot ever, ever want to be right so bad that you will guess. You have to always make sure that you do the work. Let's have some fun. Everybody's terrified. <laughs> By the way, the first time I taught this class, I wrote on one of these boards. Karen was there for like five minutes, the very, very beginning of the class, with Sharpie. <laughs> and nobody in class let me know. <laughs> so nice. I'm trying not to make that mistake again. What is this? We'll say this is a uh, section nine to north, ten east. What's the shaded area? Nope, not a correction section. I'm sorry. Of. You guys are going to see me write these in different ways a lot. Sometimes I'll have the slash mark, sometimes I won't. Sometimes I won't even have the four. If it's a half, I'll always have the two, though. Always. How many acres? What is this? Southeast, southeast. <clears throat> Sorry? Shout it out. When you're looking at the tracks, this is this is a little confusing when it comes to our track descriptions. You're looking at them. <laughs> okay. When you're breaking them down, you're always going to start with the largest part. But you'll, if you're going to do that, you're going to be writing from right to left. So what is this? Northwest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you go to the next smaller piece of it, which is this, which is what? South, South half. half. And then you break that again into this, and that is what? Of this, right? South half, the south half, and the northwest. How many acres? This is 160. So half of that, 80, and then half of that is 44. <clears throat> it's a little confusing because you read it from left to right, but when you're plotting it out, you're usually doing it from right to left. <clears throat> so what is that? Northeast. 
Which way am I going? West. Sorry? West. I'm going west? No. What's on? Right. I'm confused. <laughs> am I right from right to left? You want me to write you want me to write the big portion or the little portion first? The big portion. Big portion. So it's the northeast. 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 Which covers this guy. Okay. What's the next portion? South half. South half? South half? What's this? Southeast. This guy. Northwest. Northwest. Try to write that guy now without using our memory as to where it was. Imagine, or even write it on there if you want, do the word of in between each one of those separators. Northwest of the southeast, of the northeast. So we know this is a piece of this guy, and this is a piece of this guy. We're in the northeast quarter, so we know it's this guy. We're in the southeast of that, so we know it's this guy. It's northwest. Did, did you say that you always write half and you don't only write corners? Is that yes, I don't. You guys can do it however you want. The reason I let you know that is because a lot of times when I'm doing it on the board, I'll forget to put the little four. But I know it's there. Four is implied. If you see two directional modifiers, then it's a quarter or something. You're not going to see a northwest third. I hope you don't see a northwest third. You will see things that are odd that jump out at you from time to time in the business. Uh, and that's because not everybody knew exactly what they were doing. You know, Hundred years ago, things were new. So you might have deeds and conveyances where people just assumed that they knew what they were doing, or they hired the family attorney, and the family attorney said, "Yeah, I can do that. I'm an attorney. Why, why wouldn't I be able to?" Do that? <coughs> he didn't know what he was doing, so he wrote things like, you know, the north half of the west half, which is just the northwest quarter. Not a big deal. But when you see other ones, if you see you know, the southeast third or the southeast half, there's a problem. I don't like that section there, I think. have multiple tracks. For the purpose of this class, we're going to separate them by a semicolon. That used to be the way that they always did, but since people have started plotting out everything in, in computer programs, uh, be it Excel or Gplotter or any other system that they might be using, things change. They don't always use the same system, the same formatting. So you might see them separated by commas, or and symbols, ampersands, or the word and, or colons, any different way. But for the purpose of this class, if you see a semicolon, it denotes separation of tracks. So how many tracks are on the board? Three. Plot them. Raise your hand if you have questions. I'm oh, sorry, did you need a pencil? <laughs> yeah, you're okay.
look at it. Come up here and draw those in there for us. Pick a color, just don't use a sharp. <laughs> so you got the northwest. Just my guess. And it's the northeast and the northwest. You can draw those up for It's the south. So southeast, west half to the southeast, that's an easy one. And then the northeast to the northeast to the northeast. So northeast. That's my guess. I'm sticking to it. Well, look at it again. Northeast. Northeast. No, turn it into fours again. Oh. And you gotta have another. Then that would be the northeast of the northeast. Uh, now, the easiest way to to notice that you made a mistake on that <laughs> is if, for instance, you got it right now. You could let me see. If you had written, if you had drawn it out like this. Write it out again. Do this part again, based off what you have. You have the northeast, northeast. <laughs> so now you know northeast. You have this. So you know you made a mistake somewhere. These filling in the tracks based off of the track descriptions that you have, you're going to do all the time. Every report that you file is going to have a plat map page, usually an Excel format, because the people who look at these who are going to enter them into their databases, they're not landman typically, or if they are, they're not the same as us. They can't just look at those and say, oh, this is what it is. A lot of these guys are people who have never left their computer screens. All they deal with are maps and things all day long. And they like a nice visual representation of anything they, they, they're working with. So they want to just flip to a page and say, oh, okay, that fits in nicely. Puzzle piece right here, just like that. So we're going to be doing these all the time. You're not going to be doing these as much based off of the plat image that you already have. You're not typically going to be handed a chunk that is just a, a tracked map portion that's the northeast of the northeast. They're not going to say, here, go run this, please. They're going to give you this instead. And then you're going to plat this out. 
need to know how to apply these things out. But you also need to know how to write out the legal description. Let's do some more of these. I'm going to focus on these quite a bit. I see blank stairs. <laughs> Colors don't mean anything. What is that? South half of the south east. How many acres? Eighty. pictures, very, very helpful. When you first start, especially, you're going to run into all kinds of fun stuff. Let's say you have a section. You're running a full section. And it's broken up like that. And you'd be lucky if it were all nice and, and rectangular like that. Uh, Sometimes it will be, sometimes it won't be. But if you're running a full section and you're trying to verify that you hit everything and you're, you're tallying everything up, you're running this guy here, which appears to be the north half of the northwest of the northwest. I can't really tell for sure. You're going to likely have yourself a map drawn so you can shade it in and see what it looks like. Just keep records as you go along. Sometimes you'll use it on you'll do it on the computer. Nowadays everything is is, is just laptop done, draft app. Makes it a whole lot easier. If you have a visual representation, especially when you're new, it makes things a whole lot easier. Not everybody does it, not everybody needs it. I need it. Very helpful. If it were like the northeast border, no. But if it were something uh, that was broken apart like this. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything, so I'm shading things as I go along. Let's say I have everything shaded except for this little guy right here. I didn't have, we'll call that, uh, call that the northeast. I don't know what that is. <laughs> northeast, southeast. I didn't have that guy shaded in means I missed it somewhere while I was running my title. So now I need to go back through and look at it and see if I can find it. Sometimes it's just because I wrote it down wrong or read it wrong. I accidentally had the Northwest, which is actually what it's supposed to be. Yeah. I wrote it wrong, so I need to go back through and check it. Do you save all your documentation? Yes. I have file cabinets full of stuff that... Do you save it yeah, yeah, I could, uh, I could probably be on quarters, even though it's only six years worth of stuff. Uh, if I ever have a house fire, it's really, really going to go up. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of paper. Yeah. All right. You guys are going to hear me say <coughs> this word quite a bit. Instrument. Kind of gotten away from that word a little bit here and there. We'll say this. An instrument is basically referring to any type of official legal document that's going to be filed in any of the court assets that we look at. After all, all we are is landmen who entitled are <clears throat> nothing more than records checker or uh, glorified librarians. Well paid, not overpaid, but very well paid glorified librarians. Digging through old books, books that are 100 plus years old, that are written by people who used different languages back then. Now, old English. <coughs> and a lot of them wrote with their feet, I think. <laughs> yeah. They're going to learn how to interpret handwriting like, like you wouldn't believe. You, know, you think you have bad, bad handwriting? It's, 
nothing compared to some of the folks who've been writing these books for a uh, hundred years.